Hi, I'm PJ Matavish, and welcome back to another DCG tutorial. So as you can see here, we're on section B, and we're continuing on with the 2015 paper. So this is question B2, the axonometric question. Alright, so as always, read through it first. So a 3D graphic below shows an exterior light. Uh, in the cap of the light, a regular hexagon, hexagonal prism penetrates a square-based pyramid. Alright, so they're showing here in the 3D graphic, you have your prism, uh, being penetrated there by the square based prism. Uh, figure B2 show, below shows an incomplete isometric projection using the axiometric axis method of the two solids which penetrate each other. The plan and incomplete elevation are shown uh, in their required position. A pictorial view of the intersecting solids is also shown. So part A, draw the axonometric axis X, Y and Z and the equilateral triangle ABC which has a side of 110 mil. Uh, B, draw the plan and the incomplete elevation orientated as shown. And C, complete the drawing showing all lines of interpenetration in the axonometric projections and in the elevation. Alright, so, so here, here you have your 3D graphic showing it uh, what their example, what they're taking it from. So you have your hexagonal prism intersecting with a square based pyramid. Alright, we have our plan, elevation and then a 3D graphic. Now I was glad this question came up because it is uh, a nice question, axiometric is a nice question. So let's do what they say first, okay? They always put in order for you. So we're going to start off at A, we're going to draw the X, Y axis and X, Y, Z axis and put in our equilateral triangle there, A, B, Z. All right. Okay, that was the first part, and then next part was draw the plan and incomplete elevation orientated as shown. So I'm not too sure if I'll be able to fit the whole drawing in on the page, so we're just going to turn it down now to find the plan. Okay, and as you can see in the in the question, actually we'll show you here. So here is our equilateral triangle ABC, and the plan is orientated off the y-axis. So bring the y-axis down. Also bring down points A and points B. That width there, which is your 110, find a semicircle on that width, bisect it. In this case, it is 55 mil in radius. Okay, and where that semicircle cuts your y-axis, gives you the corner of your elevation, gives you the orientation of it. So that's going to be your angle there. Okay, so let's do that. Now keep this all nice and light because it might interfere with the 3D. All right. So that's our corner. And it should be 45 degrees if we're spot on. Yep. So 45 degrees. That's a corner. Okay. Now we can start putting in our points. All right. Okay, that's your plan done. So we might we might end up over this treaty. So uh, over this plan. So I'm not going to draw in strong yet. Okay, so I hope you can see down the screen. So that's the plan done. We have our axis done. Next thing is the elevation. So let's do that. Okay, so that is the corner of our elevation. Now we can start our elevation from that side, okay? So if you're looking at the height of the elevation, I want to find this point here. Alright, they're not giving me a height. What they are giving you is if you extend up this corner, 
which we have here until it reaches the end point there of the semicircle even putting a black dot for you that is the height so by drawing that across we'll give you the height in the center there and then that's your triangle all right so draw this across center point and that's it Now that elevation should be uh, far enough out of the way that it won't interfere with the 3D. So I'm going to draw as much of that in strong as I can now, okay? Now I'm just zooming in here on the plan for a minute just so we can label a few of the points, alright? So I'm going to label the points of the hexagon first because that's the handiest part to do so we'll go with zero one all right and then we'll go with labeling the hexagon as well or the square base pyramid we'll label them points um with letters okay even though we have we we'll go with capitals as you know, as we have our and the center point there at the top of the pyramid we'll, we'll label that e just even though it's not a point just so you know what line I'm talking about, we'll say A to E, B to E and so on. Okay, so there are the points in plan. So now we're going to move up to the elevation and label those points in elevation. Okay, so this is the elevation. This is point zero. We have then on the 30 mark here, so with those lines coming down, they'll be strong as well, but we don't know how far, so we'll lift them in light. This is point five in the front and one at the back. This is point four at the front and two at the back and then point three here. Now I know you can't see both of them at the same time but if you look at your plan on your own sheet you should look you should see where we're getting these points from. Then we have point A here in the front and point D and at the back we have point C here and point B. Then at the top then is point E. Alright. Now we can't finish off the elevation without starting the 3D. So as it says there, part B was draw the plan in incomplete elevation oriented as shown. So that means you can complete the, ele uh, the plan and you can't complete the elevation. That's fine. Not drawing the plan in strong now because... So I'm not drawing the plan in strong down here yet because it might interfere with the 3D. So we're going to start the 3D and then from that we can complete the elevation. Alright. So we'll bring up the square base pyramid first. So always you project into the axis here at the same angle that you project the plan and your elevation so in this case you're projecting everything from the plan straight up and everything from the elevation down at 30 degrees so if you see here we bring up point A, B, C, D and points E so point A bring it straight up it's going to be on this line here bring point A down and then they meet here so that's your point a, the capital A over where the little A was. Point B, straight up, point B, straight down. This back corner here is point B. Point C, straight down, point C, straight up. Hopefully, I think you, you should be able to see most of this. Okay, so this is point C. And then point D, straight down, and point D, straight up. So you have to continue that one on. So D is on this line here. Alright, and D is on that central line, same one as E. So this is point D here. So good, we're gonna miss the plan, so we can put that in strong. Okay, so D joined up to A. And let's bring down point E. So point E is this top point here. Bring that down. It's on the center line, so this is point E. Now join A, B and C up to E. No, B is already done. Just join A and C up to E to find that triangle. Now I'm just going to draw in the plan in strong so it stands out.
Now, I'm trying to keep much of the drawn into the view as you can see, but uh, you'll probably miss a bit of the plan now. So once you've done the 3D, the isometric of the square base pyramid, it's time now to put in the prism. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the top section over where you actually see the hexagon. So we're going to put in, bring our points 0 to 5 straight down here and bring them straight up, okay? So I'm going to do one and then I'll fast forward. So this is the line from point 0 in the elevation. So bring that down 30 degrees. And this is point 0 in plan. Bring that straight up. So straight up this direction. And straight down this direction. And where they meet will be your point 0 in your 3D. So do the same with points 1 to 5. Alright, and to finish the 3D, they go straight down. Alright, and as I said there, complete the drawing showing all lines of interpenetration in the axiomatic projections and in uh, the elevation. So, what they want you to see, or what they want you to show you, or <laughs> what they want you to show is where are points on the elevation, alright, or on our prism, to stop, where they hit the pr uh, pyramid. So it's kind of like an interpenetration question as well. So a few of the points, or two of the points we can do straight off the bat. So point zero and point three. So point zero, if you follow it down, you can see the edge of it here. So you can actually see where it's in the pyramid. So that's the height of it there. So point zero, the height of it is where it hits the AB line there. So that can be brought down. Same with point uh, three. Okay, so we can do that lightly first. So this point here is where it hits the AE surface, so bring that down, that's the height of it. So this is point zero at the back. And then bring down point three here. And this is the height of point three, follow point three down. That's point three there. So that can be drawn in strong. That's how far down point three is going. Now to find how far down points five and four are going, all right, that straight surface here, we need to look at the plan. Okay, so if you look at the plan or at the plan, points four and five, where do they hit that surface? If we bring that line across. Okay, to the edge. So to that AE line here, which we have up here in the elevation. And I'm just going to mark that in a different color. So if we bring it over here, it's going to give the point. If we bring that point straight up, so project it back to the 3D. So you're working off the plan here. So bring it up to the 3D. I'll bring it up here with the color as well, just so it can stand out. So we're bringing that point straight up until it hits the AE line, which is here. That is the height on the surface where it actually, uh, where the points four and five actually hit the surface. So let's bring that back to the same angle. Because it'll be the same angle as the base point there. So bring that across the same angle. That's a line on the surface, and that's where your points four and five stops. This is point five here. This is point four. Okay, so bring those down strong. Okay, you could do the same for points one and two at the back, but they're not uh, they're not visible, so there's no point. So that's the height for four and five. If that's the height of here in the 3D, bring it back to the elevation to find the height for five and for four in the elevation. So this is Point five, bring it back. This is the height for five here, and the height for four is there. That should be the same height. Okay, so we just brought back the height there for four and five, brought it back to the elevation, and that's the height for four and five there. Now we can't just join 
4 to 3 here because we have that B E line here. Same thing with uh, A to E. You can't just join 5 back over to where 0 is. You need to find where it crosses that edge. All right? And to find that, we have to look at the plan. So if you look at the plan here, point 0 goes to 5. But before it goes to 5, it goes to this point here where A E line, where that pyramid cuts the prism. All right, so let's put that in with orange. So I'll do one, and then you can do the other one yourself. So this is point A to E. So this point right here, that point, that needs to be brought up to the edge here of the line AE. So bring it up with the color. All right, so that is the AE line here. All right, and that's where the A E line will stop being strong. So that can go on strong up to the prism anyway. So that's at the back. So you would have joined there to here and then back down to zero. So if you do the same on the far side, so we're okay. So on the far side, then on the B E line, this point, same as where we did here, that point there, that gave us a height. We drew it across, gives a height for four. This height here, if we bring that across, I put in with broken orange line just so it stands out. Bring that across the A B line. Okay, right here. That's given us the same point down here in the plan. Alright, because we can't just bring that point straight up because it's uh, we're looking straight in it, it's gonna be on that line. So we had to find the height of it, and that was the same height as that point there. As you can see, look, it's the same cut across. So we're bringing that cut across, that's our point. So we join four to that point and then go back down to three and then three to two. Let's put in that point here as well and see if if we'll actually see that on the B or the C E line. You will, so it's going up there as well. So that's going to give you that angle there, right? Alright, so I'm going to draw that strong now and join four up to this point here and then back down to three and we put in the prism in strong round. Okay, so that is the isometric projection of it done in strong. So it has points four to five down here. It has to go back up to the edge before you can go back down to point three. Same thing, three has to go up before it goes back down to point, point two. Okay, and just drew point down, two stone strong. Uh, no hidden detail required. So what's left to do now is the elevation. Those points we brought here, those uh, intersection points, need to be brought back to the elevation. Okay, so that's 30 degrees. So we have points uh, four and five down here. We need the point where it crosses uh, the AE line, which was this point here for the BE line. So let's bring that back. That's our orange point here. And it's we needed the one on the far side as well, so let's bring this one back, this on the AE line. And across the AE is here. So your strong line is gonna go up the AE line, back down to five here, over, up and across. Okay, so Now hopefully that bit of colour stands out a bit better. So there is our, in yellow we have our hexagonal prism and then in blue we have your square base pyramid okay and how it's intersecting each other. Okay so I hope that looks familiar to what you did on the day exam. I hope this helped. Uh, if it did please leave a like and we'll see you in the next one. Okay thank you and good luck.